Welcome to God's View. We are back for the third week with our very special guest, Bob Cornuke, which is an evangelist archaeologist that has made some amazing finds, including Paul's shipwreck. You've heard about some of the amazing stories, and there's been a really big find just recently, which he really can't tell about, but it will be out within the next eight months. And like you heard it right out of Bob's mouth that it is going to literally stagger the people, the non-believers. So, and we are very happy to hear that news. Remember, as we're going along, call our prayer lines 307-637-PRAY, that's 7729. Also go to the bottom of the screen and, and go get you some a supernatural deal at Sierra Trading Post, one of our sponsors. Use the key code GODSVIEW11 at checkout, get 20% off and get, I mean, you will find fabulous things there. Yeah. Uh, today we don't have a lot of time to talk about that because we want to get right into the program, but for you new viewers, we welcome you. We just so welcome you. Uh, we're having the time of our life coming into your homes and we're hearing feedback on the prayer lines and we're so blessed that your life is being touched and changed. Mm -hmm. And so I am Charlene back to Miriam. Um, this is Lana Gardner. This hey. is Jennifer Griffin. Mm -hmm. And this is Mary Ann Peluso and our very special guest Yay! for our third week, Bob <laughs> Cornuke. And oh, it's been so fabulous, Bob. And you go, oh, I think we've been all over. But you know what? We like the Holy Spirit to just flow here. So we don't kind of like put everybody in a box. And, if, and and like I said to you, you know, if there's a question you don't like, say, oh, let me finish this or go here because we're just free here. We want the Holy yeah. Spirit to yeah. just do what he yeah. wants. And that's yeah. why we enjoy it yes. and people enjoy it because we're not just in this little, so just go. Yeah. Where do you oh, want to go? Uh, hey, where did we leave off last show? I don't even. On Mount Sinai. Well, we're, we're, we're dealing with the Mount, Mount Sinai, Sinai and, the, and the new discoveries and what yes. we're doing in Ethiopia. Yeah, so we're, we're just, uh, oh, yeah, uh, the, the, the Mount Sinai story, I'll tell you what's happened mm -hmm. recently with that. Yes. And I'll, and I'll email you the, the, the picture so we can get it on screen. Yes, get it on screen. But, but we have more recently, uh, there has been a picture that we have uh, that shows all of the gold jewelry uh, that has been found behind the fence. Now, you know at Mount Sinai, when Moses didn't come down from the mountain, mm. that they that, that, that <gasps> they, they were told to take off their jewelry at Mount yeah. Sinai? Yeah. Hundreds of pieces. Even a charioteer's oh. glove, I'll show you. It's all Egyptian jewelry found around wow. that fence, oh and they put God. it into the museum in Riyadh, which, which is another piece of the puzzle. And then we also have around the mountain, oh. there's been found by a, a man named Dr. Kim, who was a Korean working for the royal family, a Korean mm. doctor working for the royal family. And he read my book. He says, if this is the real Mount Sinai, I'm going to go out and try and find stuff. So he went all around the region and the mountain, and he's come back with a whole bunch of photos and, 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 and pictures of um, uh, menorahs, oh. the oldest word Yahweh ever found, the oldest inscription of El Shaddai oh, ever found. Wow. So if this is the real Mount Sinai, uh, that we're talking about the other shows, is God is now just peeling the, the layers of the onion back. But yes. for some people... There's never enough. Yeah. Oh I know. There's some proof, people that will say, proof. I will not believe no matter how much you give me. And no, so it, it goes, it, it's not a head issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a heart oh, issue. Right. 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 And so some people's hearts are so hardened to the word of God yeah. that no matter what you say, they're not going to accept. Mm -hmm. But God has a way of taking even the hardest heart we've That's seen right. in scripture. Look at Paul. That's true. Hard. Yes man mm -hmm. and now look, look what God did to him in history changing his heart yeah. so I'm not giving up on anybody anybody no. so no. If, if, but power of prayer yeah. and the Holy Spirit can change but but by by and large most mm -hmm. people choose not to believe mm -hmm. so but I'm the jury oh go ahead I'm the jury yeah we count us yeah well, I'm sorry. Well, well, there's the life of the party for right. sale right. no <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I I want you to tell everyone how you found this location. Oh, the Mount Sinai location. Oh, the Mount Sinai location. Well, yes. I'd love That's to say I'm question. smart and figured this all out, but there were some men that were before us. They went to this mountain and were arrested, and they came to Jim Irwin. Uh, the families did and said, "Help get the, the, these these guys out of jail over there." 
<laughs> and so uh, the, I think it was like Sleeping 70 days or something. No. And they and so they said, we're not yeah. going to go back in. <laughs> and I got to be partnered with a man named Larry Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry was a great guy, nominated twice for United States Senator in Montana, Commodities mm -hmm. Trader of the Year in the Wall Street Journal. And he's a famous daughter named Michelle Williams, who just got the Academy Award nomination for my week with Marilyn, that's a, you know, the hmm. famous oh, actress, right. is my partner's daughter. Oh, my. In fact, I helped. I used to read stories to her when she was a little girl. And she said, "I want to be an actress." Oh, of course, you want to say wow. you can be what, anything you want to believe. You know, give them that. Who knew that she'd do that? Oh, she, so she's a great, great actress. But anyway, Larry and I went over there. He was a man of extreme wealth, and he said, "I'll pay for everything." I said, mm. "Okay, that's a good that that's, that's a, good a good thing." thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so we go over to Saudi Arabia, and the Bible says that Mount Sinai. Mm is in Arabia. Galatians 4.25 right. says, Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Yeah. Most people will say that Mount Sinai is in the Sinai Peninsula, which is wrong because that's Egypt. The Bible says over 70 times they went out of Egypt. Wow. Then we have uh, the Bible wow. saying that, hmm. the ancient, that, that, that mm -hmm. Moses met God at the burning that's bush right. in the ancient land of Midian, which is in Arabia. So if the Bible is saying Arabia, then it's Arabia. Yeah, we sh why don't we look <laughs> where the Bible yeah, says, you know? But, but tradition is a very strong thing. Yeah. And we have Queen Helena who said in about the fourth century that Mount Sinai is in the Sinai Peninsula, and that mm -hmm. messed it up for us. So we now have, <laughs> now if you look at Flavius Josephus, Demetrius, and Philo, historians from 250 BC, Greeks. they say that Mount Sinai is in Arabia, the highest mountain in the ancient land of Midian. So we went to the highest mountain of Midian, mm -hmm. and this mountain peak is black on top, mm -hmm. and it's got these boundary markers all around it, and it's got this fence with all the, the, the gold they found the gold. Black from the burning yeah, bush. Yeah, and, and, and then, yeah, the whole top of the rock, is, the whole mountain is, is burnt, burnt black. Yeah. And yeah. what I did is, I uh, people, my critics have said, that's volcanic rock. In fact, all the maps, it, mm -hmm. it names as a volcanic mountain. I climbed the mountain, broke the rocks open, and they're granite on the inside, <gasps> and black, <laughs> melted black on the outside. Oh, no. And we have them tested, and this metamorphic rock changed by heat and or pressure by mm -hmm. the surface, mm -hmm. by the American Museum of Natural History, no less. Mm -hmm. But people are saying, how can this be? How can you have all these black, melted rocks on top of this mountain? Then around the mountain, there, there's an altar at the foot of the mountain with these, with these white stone pillars and ancient ash there, and the Bible says they did burn offerings with 12 oh. small pillars at the foot of the mountain. Wow. Then the Bible talks about uh, the oh. split rock at Horeb, and Jim and Penny Caldwell from Mississippi go over there four years after I did, and they find this huge rock that's 45 feet high that split right down the middle, and the whole the side of the mountain just washed yeah. away the mountainside. Mm -hmm. There's only, get, they get half, half an inch of rain every 10 oh years there, yet the whole mountainside is washed away. Wow. So, in other words, the well, evidence oh, just goes boom, go boom, go boom, right. and the cave right. is on the mountain, and they found, uh, in fact, they even found uh, almond trees growing around the mountain, oh and, and the almond trees in the middle of the desert, wow. and they found these almond trees, and that's what Aaron, of course, remember yes. the, the budding Shabbat almond? When, when, when God said to Aaron, this bud's for you. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, my I wife hates that joke. That. You know I so, <laughs> so he gave him the budding almond rod. But anyway, what this tells us, <laughs> Is that the Bible's true? Yes. Oh, these are the myths, these aren't myths and legends. So was it and it's guarded. It? Yes. It's guarded by they, they, the. They're still guarding it today. So they, when so you they were won't there, let anyone go in there. Nobody's allowed yeah. in there. It's forbidden. Because they know they they're hiding something. Yes, they yeah. are hiding it. So was it real? What, I mean, was there a presence when you were there? Was there really a presence uh, or no? Is well, that you know, like when a, when when you talk about a mythy thing feelings as a police officer and going to trial, you hate to say I have this feeling. Mm. Who, you know, feelings don't really matter to. in science and mm -hmm. research. So, but I do. Since you've asked, I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, Larry and I went to the top of the mountain where Moses was told, we think, to take off his sandals. And God said, this is holy ground. I was standing up in those burnt rocks and I was with Larry. Mm. Now, I'm a former SWAT guy. I'm not prone to get mm -hmm. too excited about anything. And I'm saying, Larry, how are you feeling? He goes, I feel like I'm dropping down an elevator shaft. My stomach is almost coming out of our throat. Our wow. heart is beating fast. Mm -hmm. We're getting nervous. I said, is this a real feeling? He goes, I'm feeling it, and you're feeling it. Let's get off this mountain, because this is where this is holy ground. Ooh. And we're up there trampling around holy ground. Right. And so you got to understand, this wow. mountain is the only place that God's ever physically come down exactly. and touched. His presence came down on this mountain. It was called the mountain of God. Elijah went there. and. Very interesting, Paul in Galatians 1, after the Damascus Road experience, he went to Mount Sinai. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I could correct that. After the Damascus Road experience, he went to Arabia. 
and he mentions Mount Sinai in Galatians 4.25. Mm -hmm. So we know that he went there. Wow. So of course he would have known of it. It would have been a pilgrimage site for many people. Right. But yeah. since the Muslims have had it now for so right. many years, it's become quietly lost in history. Mm -hmm. And now there's this mountain over there that's been lost and we think we've come back and we're letting the world see the real Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. wow. Look how they hide it. They know the truth and they're still hiding it. There's oh, a God, fence around it. And, and they found menorahs and things. And we have pictures where they're chiseling off menorahs or they're putting metal, metal plates over things to hide the world, the truth, the truth. about the historical wow. Bible. Wow. Scary stuff. Amazing. And that goes back to what I said in the last program, that the Lord will use a natural fact to confirm a supernatural truth. Yes. You know, the Bible is a book of supernatural things. So what you're finding points to the supernatural that only any other religion, you know, is only a, a, a phony to what, you know, Mount Sinai where God came down in that presence. I mean, as you're talking about it, mm -hmm. I could just, you know, okay, I'm full-blooded Italian. I feel a lot. But I sensed when you're talking about going up there and even, you know, feeling that presence where God came down and spoke to Moses, gave him the Ten Commandments. Um, I mean, ground. where, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the holy ground. Well, these miracles Abraham. actually happen. We, we have to read in Scripture where it says, uh, it talks about Scripture, that the, the Bible says, I showed you this, these things that you'll know that I am the Lord yes. God and that there is no others. In other words, wow. God is not a cosmic show-off. He doesn't mm -hmm. like to just do miracles nilly-willy for just yeah. no reason at all yeah. because he yeah. likes pyrotechnics or pillars of fires. Well, he's there, got is, an ego. There, is, there is purpose yeah. and, yes. and, and everything. For instance, um, you, you take Noah's Ark. Here's a boat and a flood. The ark is a forerunner of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you're on that ark, you're saved. If you're off that ark, you're perished. We have an ark today in Jesus yes, Christ. Mm -hmm. I tell That's people, right. what does it matter if we find an old boat on Noah's on, on mountain or over in Turkey yeah. or, or wherever they, you, you might believe Noah's ark should be? If you don't find the real ark of Jesus, it's right yeah. in front of you. Yes. Yes. That's the real important ark. That's right. And that's, and that's only a prayer away. You don't have to go on an airplane and climb mountains. So I tell people, Amen. these are important things, but everything yeah. in scripture has a purpose. So all truth is parallel. All parallel. Yeah. And, Natural and, 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 and truth, and there's harmony. parallel spirits. So Bob, what do you know about Noah's Ark? I mean, because a lot of people are so interested in that. I mean, viewers, I mean, people, I always want to know, you know, there's such controversy about that. It's here, it's there, this one yeah, found yeah. it, that one didn't find it. So what do you know about it? Well, we trust you. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I can be honoring to that trust. I've, I've probably looked for Noah's Ark more than anyone that's ever lived in mm. history. I've probably, if, if you add up the miles and driving uh, and, wow. the, and the mountains wow. that I've climbed, I don't think anyone's look, looked wow. more diligently for the ark in distance and time than I have mm. that's ever lived. So I think I'm a little authority on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And led the expeditions uh, going over there and, and been a part of it with Jim Irwin. People are saying they find Noah's Ark all over Mount Ararat in Turkey. It's never been found. The Chinese have just come out uh, recently and said, we found it over there. We got a lot of people saying, oh, well, we, we had, I had a team friend of mine go up there to the site, found the wood. It's only two years old. They took big blow torches and melted oh, it black. Oh and then they melted the ice so that the, the ice went over it. Oh, and when I was looking at the photos and they're saying, oh, we found Noah's Ark at 13,000 feet or whatever. And I found cobwebs. I superimposed the photos. I found cobwebs up in the, the, the rafters. There's no cobwebs Smart. at 13,000 oh, feet. My. So I said, right. no, this is not it. And so there's a lot of people though that, that can make clue. money off this or get very yeah. sensational. And that's uh, the sad part about it is we have a public that's yearning to have a great find like yeah. that. Yes. Right. And I don't think uh, maybe God doesn't want it found. Mm -hmm. right. You know, someone said to me once, what There'll would you do if you found Noah's Ark? I said, I'd burn it. I'd photograph it, document it, and then burn it. Why mm -hmm. would you burn it? Because people would start taking those fragments of wood right, and they would and become worship. idols yes. to them. They would become worshipped. They'd bring their babies and they'd oh, sell it and they'd, you yes. know what I mean? So I, I, you it's know, it, it's not the, the wood that's important. It's what yeah. was done at that event. God saved all of humanity, all animals and everything else. Mm -hmm. So as far as the search goes, if we read scripture, it says in, Gal in Genesis 11, 1 and 2, that, that, that the, the mm -hmm. descendants of Noah, it doesn't say per, per se the descendants of Noah, but it says, before the Tower of Babel, which is the fourth generation after Noah. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> relatively soon after the time of Noah, that the descendants journeyed from the east and they settled in Shinar, Genesis 11, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Shinar is present day, uh, for all intents and purposes, Baghdad. That's the Mesopotamia <laughs> Valley. <clears throat> so if the descendants journeyed from the east, they would have come from the northern mountains of Iran. Uh, Turkey's oh. northwest. 
Uh, uh, Jer Jeremiah 51, 27 says, Eret, Mini, and Askenaz are closely aligned. And it's mm -hmm. a prophecy about Cyrus the Great going down and taking Babylon. Well, that's Eret, Mene, and Ashkenaz, that's they're all located in Iran. Mm -hmm. The Mene tribes are on Lake Ermia, Ashkenaz, north of the, north of the Muguan Steppe. Okay. That's all Iran. Yeah. Uh, Second Kings 19, 30, Smart, 36 yeah. and 37, there was a man named Sennacherib who was an Assyrian king mm -hmm. killed by his right. two middle sons named Adalramalak Adel and Sher Sherizar. Tough to remember all these things. Tell and they fled into the land of, of Eret. Well, that's the Mene tribes in Iran. So the Bible said three times that it's in Iran. Iran has bigger mountains than Colorado. Mm -hmm. Wow. It goes up to 18,000 yeah, feet. Why, are we, why aren't we following where the Bible yeah, says? Fabulous why aren't we following where the Bible says? Yes. Because Eret. The Middle East a region of the world filled with complex cultures and beliefs, and for thousands of years, the center of conflicts touching the rest of the world. This same region has also been God's stage for amazing events that have helped shape civilization and bewildered mankind as we struggle to understand and interpret biblical miracles. Skeptics claim that the Bible is merely a book filled with fables and folklore while others believe it to be a detailed map of discovery, not only for the soul, but to archaeological evidence crying out to be revealed. Well, I met a man named Jim Irwin who was the eighth man to walk on the moon. He was a piece of history. When he came back from the moon, he wanted to do something different with his life. He felt that he had a calling, a calling by God, to go look for lost locations in the Bible. He was involved heavily with looking for Noah's Ark at the time. Meet Bob Cornuk, a former crime scene investigator and member of an elite SWAT team unit. Now a biblical investigator, international explorer, and author of numerous books, Bob has participated in over 25 expeditions searching for lost locations described in the Bible. Recruited by Apollo 15 astronaut Jim Irwin to serve as his personal security advisor on an expedition in search of Noah's Ark in terrorist-held eastern Turkey, the two formed a bond and became close friends. Several years after Irwin's death, Cornuke founded Base Institute to expand on the mission of his mentor and friend. Bob's expeditions in search of the Ark of the Covenant, Paul's shipwreck, and Noah's Ark have yielded significant archaeological finds directly supporting scriptural accounts of these events and garnered international media exposure. Tracing the footsteps of some of the Bible's most recognizable figures has led Bob straight into some of the most inhospitable places for Westerners anywhere on the planet. Held prisoner no less than five times and facing death on several occasions, Bob continues his quest for one unavoidable reason. The truth is out there, and that truth can be found, but only if you're willing to look. Yes. Because Ararat is such an anointed mountain in tradition that no one's willing to even pull their minds out of that and go wow. to a different paradigm. Yeah. And that's what I do is I take the Bible and say, let's follow the, the Word of God as it's a road map and as a Praise compass. Oh. Doesn't the Bible tell it to be a yes. lamp unto our feet yes. and guide it to our feet? Yes. We need to follow the Word of God in archaeology and in life. Yeah. Right? It, yes, it, it, that's why you are a good detective. How, do, how about Ark of the Covenant? So all those years of being, <laughs> oh, go ahead. being involved with the police, and, and, yeah. and that was detective. all preparing you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Is, yeah. I, it, it was because I look at, because there's two ways to find truth in this world. The mm. problem with our university systems today is they have a thing called premise plus proof. Here's the premise you know, that we have a flat earth and here's all the proof and da, 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 and then we didn't go to the moon and we evolved mm -hmm. from this and that. Oh. Okay, here's all the evidence, that's premise, and then you put all your source material around. In other words, you get all your buddies to agree and you get all this material yeah, yeah. that agrees with you and you put mm -hmm. it all on this thing. Mm -hmm. That's not how you find truth. Mm -hmm. The police department, you have a thing called problem plus possibility. Mm -hmm. What are the possibilities and what is the problem? For instance, the Bible says Mount Sinai is in Arabia. That's a problem. What are the possibilities? Let's look in Arabia. So people are even, the, even, the, even the process of determining truth is flawed because there is no truth outside the Word of God. Mm -hmm. the only, uh, there's only two ways, there's only two truths in the world. That's, that's um, or empirical, uh, empirical truths and that is pure logic or physics. So we, everything is degrees of probability mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people are putting their eternity on yeah. degrees of probability right. that, yes. this, that, that this scientist this is, is right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's it's in their it's right in their backyard all the time, and they they just so they, they, many they times miss it. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. And yeah. I always want the audience to know. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. The Bible mm -hmm. is the the, the 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 reformers used a phrase called ad fuentes. It's Latin that means go to the source. Mm -hmm. Ad fuentes, mm -hmm. go to the source if you want to get mm -hmm. the truth. The source of pure water is you go to the spring and dip mm -hmm. your cup into the spring. But in distance and time, that water gets polluted, mm. and it gets full of pollutants. Well, that's what God's saying. Go to the source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dip your cup into the Word of God, because yes, that's where the source. pure truth is. And, mm -hmm. then, and through distance and time, humanity, yes. through their agenda of feeding the flesh and the ego, have, yeah. has corrupted the Bible. Mm -hmm. Nothing's corrupted the Bible from the original. We need to go to the source. That's where the truth is. Mm -hmm. And when man has messed it up, so don't follow what man says, yeah. follow what God instructs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a scream, you know, wow. they, they go wonderful, to the Himalayas, wonderful. they go to India to Everywhere, see the yes. truth, and what do they find? They have poverty, sickness, and diseases. It doesn't look like there's a lot of truth over there. But to go to the Word of God, where there's freedom. That's good. Yes, yeah. that's Justice. good, Lana. So, so the what Word do you know of God. About, oh, so, oh sorry. No, 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 everybody. I, I still, so, after her question, I want to hear about the, if you know anything about the Ark of the Covenant. That's so fascinating to people. I just did a, uh, uh, I've done two History Channel specials on that. Oh, mm. wow. Uh, Perfect. Then. I've led the expeditions over there. Oh. I'm on my 18th trip on oh, planning to go over so there. Again. So I've done, the I've done, I've done, and I've, I have two oh books written on the Ark of the Covenant. You do? Well, they got to go to your website. I have eight books. I, I, yes, I, yeah, I, I, I've forgotten how many I've written so many. So baseinstitute.org, I mean dot com, so they can get your base books and your stuff. Go ahead, baseinstitute.org, B-A-S-E, like baseball, institute.org. They'll find out about dot our org. trips and our dot books org. and videos. And we have videos on all the Ark of the Covenant and all that stuff, too. Okay. But the Ark of the Covenant, uh, uh, the, oh, there's only one place that the Ark of the Covenant has a living legend, and that is in Ethiopia today. Mm. And so uh, a lot of people will say, are, why is it in Ethiopia? I believe it's an old town called Aksum, Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And they either have the Ark of the Covenant or a mm -hmm. copy that they believe to be for 2,000 years. But I have followed their traditions. I have written two books and, like I said, 18 trips, my 18th trip coming up. Oh, and wow. I firmly believe that the, the, the Bible has more prophecy about the Ark of the Covenant than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I wrote a, I had my, my book is so about glad we're if there about is this. an Ark, what does God have for the ark in the future? And Isaiah oh, prophesies in Isaiah great. 18, Zephaniah 3.10 says, From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, the daughters of my dispersed, shall bring my offering. Yeah. My offering in the singular is always the ark or the tabernacle. So we have, um, we have in Isaiah 18, says a great gift will come. And a, and a messianic prophecy from Ethiopia. Wow. I have a whole, if I had wow. five hours, I, I could this. just scratch the On surface. The arc, huh? But I oh, believe wow. That the ark, and I met with the president of Ethiopia, mm. and I met with the guardian of the ark. He calls me his son, the, the, the Narud. <gasps> All these people mm. over there. Yes, the the uh, the, the, the former president mm. before this was the one. I, I took a flag that went to the moon, an Ethiopian flag, and went to the moon with Mary Irwin, the the, the yeah. widow of Jim Irwin. Gave him a flag, and I took at a reception, and I said, "Do you have the ark of the covenant?" He goes, "I'm the president of this country." He goes, oh, "The my. first thing I want to do is, is is tell you. That's the first thing I wanted to find out." He goes. We have the real Ark of the Covenant. Wow. <gasps> so you heard that right out of his the mouth. president and from the Guardian <laughs> and all the people. And it's not just for tourism it. because they've been uh -huh. saying this for 2,000 years before any tourism was even over there. But I wrote a book on it. I, I, I think wow. right now if I, if I had four hours I'd, with the Bible open, we could go through verse after verse after verse and I could lay a thing through Psalm, and Ezekiel. And it's there and it's found. The, I, well, they so they have they're, they're 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 not letting the world see it. See, okay. as yeah. Americans, we say, "Show us the beef." Yeah. But they're saying we're Shows we're we're, the we're guardians yeah. of they're the ark. Guardian of this yeah. so the they're, they're, they're they guardian of this. They're they're guardian of it. The Lord is right concealing time. it right now. Well, I I think that they they believe that God has given them uh, stewardship over this object, mm -hmm. and no one will ever see it. They don't want it commercialized. They want, they it commercialized. want it's a holy no. Is it they're, in a they're church? To it. It's in a place called St. Mary's of Zion Church in a little town called Axum. I go there every year and I'd love to take anybody Ooh, who wants to go on a trip. Go. I want to go. January 16th I to the 24th. I was January sold out last year. We are sold out the year before. How many do you take? Every year. I take about 30 people. More than that, it's a little hard to take. But we, we yeah. take about 30 people and we go through all the places where they say the ark went. We meet with the, with the, the priests. We go to the churches. And people mm -hmm. that go on this trip, 
I've had some people go three times because they said it's. Mm. They said they got three years of seminary. See, in you one go week. into this church wow. though. You can show. Uh, you know the people that go with you. We go into this church where it's at, or they no, don't you. No, you don't get you. to see that. But you get okay. to go. You get to go see artifacts, writings, books, objects mm -hmm. that they say. The the old ephod frame that we found on an island that's, that yeah. they say is oh, uh, love it, it's thousands that. of years old. Oh, the meat forks. With if, jewels. That your group all, found that also. I, I found all that stuff. Oh my you know, God! I, I, I'm going to say. I, I oh, see it. It's arrogant oh. to say you'll find anything. Yes. It, God reveals things yes. in His time for His yes. purpose oh, and His glory. Yeah. So I, God used me to I like reveal that. that. How's that? I so, like that. Wow, that's so, awesome. So, yeah. Bob, like of all that. your adventures, what, what is your favorite? Good question. <laughs> Do you have a greatest favorite? Greatest experience or greatest adventure? Whatever yeah. you think. Whatever. I think finding the the, the, the shipwreck of Paul was the, was, the, was the strong. Seeing those anchors, find exactly where Luke said at the bottom of the ocean. Wow. That Paul, that yeah. because those anchors, you can date them. You can see the distance of the water. That that really was that really gave me the the. the, the if there was and you have a book out on this too. I have a book it's out. all in the and, book, and, and, and then two of them are in this. I have a book and a video that's out. Book and, and, we, a video. and and God bless him, Douglas Gresham. The stepson of C.S. Lewis lives over the bay where we found these anchors, mm. or they, they, they were revealed. Mm. And Douglas mm. Gresham, who's, you know, have, being the stepson of C.S. Lewis and having all that Narnia wow. stuff, he had me to his house and he said, I read your book and wow. thought you might not be right. Oh. He said, but after two years of research, he goes, I'm going to go on camera and say, you found these things and I'm going to endorse it. And he's on the camera. Bob, we have two minutes <gasps> left. Listen, anchors? first of all, I want to thank you, but can you look in that camera and bring people to the Lord? And we'll go out with that. Well, I can tell okay. them about the Lord. Yes. And they, uh, so help it, it, them see, come. The, 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 the thing about on, 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 on Noah's Ark, God was in the Ark and said, come unto me. Yes. He didn't say go unto it. He didn't say you go in there. He said, come unto me. That's how God That's does good. things. Oh, he's so giving good. you, he's now inside the Ark. So good. He, if you're on that Ark, you're saved. If you're off that Ark, you're perished. There's no middle ground. You know what? There's no spiritual Switzerland. You want to hide from the truth? You're not going to hide from the truth. The Bible is prophetically, contextually, and historically accurate. And take my life, lost, father alcoholic, never go to church. God brought me supernaturally to his presence, and now I'm in full-time ministry. I, I tell you, I, the most dangerous moments in your life are sandwiched in between now and a decision to accept or reject Jesus Christ. Those are the most dangerous, perilous moments of your life. Every heartbeat, you're a heartbeat away from being on that ark mm -hmm. or off that ark. Mm -hmm. And so when that door closes on the ark, your decision time is over. Oh, okay, when that door, and God, you know what God did? He closed the door on the ark and everything that was in that ark survived and everything out that ark Perish. When the that's rainwaters good, came right. and the water oh, started good. coming up and the lungs were filled with that water from those people, they surely wanted to change their, their, their decision. But I asked you to go into the ark of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. There you'll find salvation, Jesus. forgiveness of sin, and eternal life with God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Right. And if you've done that, if you said that prayer with Mr. Bob Horn, you can come to the Lord today. Please call 307 637 pray at 7729. We'll get some literature in your hand to help you out. We love you. Jesus adores you more. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.